Welcome once again. Hi, my friends. Um, it's the start of fall here in New England, and um, we were very happy to meet um, some great doctors who were speaking on um, Ayurveda. Oh, uh, yes. Ayurveda. And it reminded me of my childhood when uh, we used to, you know, have all the leaves and crush the leaves and eat the turmeric to keep healthy and not have the cold. And I know all our South Asian women who have so many of these um, ingredients in their cabinets, in their kitchen cabinets. And um, I thought it was very interesting. So Soph and me went and um, interviewed the doctors and they had a wonderful time with us and I uh, suggest that you take a look at our interview with Dr. Shailash Kaushal and we will then follow up with another two of the doctors, practicing physicians and um, what is their say on natural herbs, natural medicine and how to remain healthy um, in New England as well as in the world. So let's take a look. Hello, I'm here to introduce Dr. Shalesh Koshal. He is the Chief Scientific Officer of Avida Biomix. This is Dr. Koshal, nice to have you here. Thank you. Please introduce yourself. My name is uh, uh, Shalesh Koshal. I'm a clinician scientist. I'm an MD, PhD person. Um, my undergraduate education was at Yale University. Uh, where I first got interested in biochemistry. Uh, I ended up uh, th thereafter going to medical school at Johns Hopkins where I did my MD and uh, subsequently my PhD uh, here in the Boston area at MIT. Um, I subsequently was, uh, did my clinical training in ophthalmology at uh, USC Doheny Eye Institute and then spent two years becoming a retina surgeon at uh, Washington University St. Louis. and. Um, to keep my family and myself entertained, we spent one year in London at Moorfields Eye Hospital learning more about retinal diseases. Uh, currently, I'm in Florida. Uh, I'm part of Retina Specialty Institute, and we have our offices in Gainesville, the Villages, and Inverness. So for many years in my lab, we've been very interested in identifying potential agents that could affect both macular degeneration and diabetic retinopathy. Uh, those are the two most common uh, causes of blindness in the Western world, and they're rising in the developing world like India, China, and so on. Uh, in the course of those studies, uh, both of the biochemistry and trying to identify new agents, we discovered a, a set of natural products found in plants and herbs that seem to be quite potent, uh, both in our cell culture studies, that's to say growing cells of the retina in petri dishes, and also in naturally occurring and genetically engineered mouse models of retinal diseases. It was just, uh, frankly, it was uh, serendipity uh, more than anything else. Uh, we were looking at ways to modify certain cellular pathways which are important in keeping cells functioning in the retina, actually in the body elsewhere, uh, in equilibrium. And these types of natural products uh, have the unusual property of affecting cer certain sets of critical cellular pathways. And that's when we started to investigate them more carefully. So this is a whole very interesting area of medicine and uh, biology, uh, both in terms of basic research and in clinical research as well. Um, there has been wonderful advances in Western medicine in understanding how are targeting a single protein with either a small molecule or a biological agent like an antibody um, has affected and profoundly influenced and improved human health and disease. Um, in, at Avita, we have a slightly different way of thinking about this. Uh, what we think is that, in fact, uh, using natural products, we may be able to affect the homeostasis or the equilibrium of a cell. So if you think about a, in a disease state, the cell or the tissue, or, or in that case the human being even, uh, is out of equilibrium, out of sorts as it were. And the idea is to return um, the cell and the tissue and of course the person back into equilibrium so that the disease can be resolved. And our idea is this, is in a cell, 
there is approximately 10 to 12 critical canonical cellular pathways. That means those pathways that are conserved from bacteria all the way up to human cells, that's important to keep the cell at homeostasis, control metabolism, and all of the other critical cellular functions. Now, even though we have specialized cells in our body, for example, liver cells, bone marrow cells, heart cells, cells of the retina, cells of the brain, and so on, muscle cells as well, these per particular cellular pathways and the biochemistry that controls them is they're interlinked. So you can think of it this way. Uh, if you have a series of springs that are connected to each other, that if you jigger one of the springs, all the other springs vibrate as well. And so you might imagine that if you could uh, identify agents, natural products in our case, that are able to hit certain critical cellular pathways, the whole cell can then reverberate and return back to equilibrium. And what that means really is the resolution of the disease at its root cause. And that's one of the things that we're very interested in at Ovita is identifying these types of natural products and in, in hopes of eventually being in a circumstance where we can treat diseases at their root cause. So um, that's the short version. Yeah, so it's also very interesting. Um, um, many of us know there are plants and herbs that grow all over the planet and they grow in unusual conditions from very cold to very hot, very dry to unusually uh, humid uh, environments. And it seems as though Mother Nature is guiding us to her uh, to identify the, those plants and herbs that are useful in certain diseases. And th in doing so, we've been able to identify at Avita a set of very interesting natural products that have this ability to reset uh, homeostasis in the cell. Now, there's something also very interesting. Uh, almost every chronic disease that we know of, regardless of where, which tissue it affects, in other words, for example, retinal diseases like diabetes, like macular degeneration, um, uh, brain diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and other forms of dementia, heart disease, lung disease, liver disease, age-related muscle loss, age-related bone marrow dysfunction, they all s share at least some common pathogenetic mechanisms. In other words, there are certain common principles that Mother Nature uses over and over again that leads to what we call a disease. And so what are they? It turns out inflammation is one of those major important factors that influences disease. Also oxidative stress, as we all know, in in the lay press, we hear about antioxidants like blueberries, blackberries, and so on, green and yellow vegetables, which are also loaded with antioxidants. They're good for us, and that's absolutely true. So these two, inflammation, oxidative stress. The third is, it's quite interesting, over the last decade or so, we've learned in both basic and clinical research that the immune system seems to be not quite um, uh, aligned as, uh, as we grow older. In some instances, it appears uh, interestingly, that the immune system is slightly hyperactive in certain disease states. And it, 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 as we're learning more, it appears more and more that human diseases share these three common features, inflammation, oxidative stress, and immune system being dysregulated or out of sorts. So those three factors seem to participate in nearly every chronic disease. And in fact, in some instances, one of those three factors predominates in certain diseases. The interesting thing is, nature has solved this in many instances with natural plants and herbs, and they've been used in many uh, interesting traditional systems, like Indian Ayurvedic medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, the traditional medicine that's found in, in, in Russia, in South America, in Africa. And many of these compounds and these plants and herbs, even though they grow in very different places, biochemically or biologically, they share this ability to affect uh, these various factors that are important in human disease. That's so nice to have you on this show, and um, I am sure our audience as well as will be well informed. Yeah. And we're looking forward to hear more from you. Well, thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah. Uh, I think that's, uh, we've covered quite a, a, a nice uh, waterfront of topics. I guess what I would say is, is that um, it seems that you know, we're at a very critical precipice in, in medicine and in biology where 
there's a huge recognition and understanding of the fundamental biological changes that occur in many human diseases. And we're, the reason why I speak we're at a precipice is because we also understand the genetic influences or have a, a much better understanding than we did uh, 10 to 15 years ago. And it's the, the commonality between human diseases is what is quite striking after all of this wonderful research here in the U.S., elsewhere in the world. And we're looking for solutions, we meaning all of us who uh, take care of patients or are interested in basic research that's focused towards helping identify new therapies. And we think that these types of natural products may be the wave of the future. It's like returning to our past to solve the future. Thank you, Dr. Karshal. It's been a pleasure. And um, hope to see you again. Thank you so much. And all the best. All right. Wonderful. As you see that we were honored to share this little time that we have with uh, we had with Dr. Karsha and um, enlightened us to a lot of uh, natural uh, what, what the wave of the future is going. So I thought it was very interesting because everybody is now going trying to go naturally. And I think natural has some uh, deep meaning, which as you understood and so did we, um, the scientific background that Dr. Koshal enlightened us with. And um, so we went ahead and we wanted to know more uh, from Dr. Sharmila Modgal as well as Dr. Parag Mehta. And we took some time, we uh, sat with them, and they explained us some more. So I thought that was excellent for any one of us. And this is one of the times when I think it's going to be of great use to all women as well as to um, anyone who, who really can see that their kitchen cabinets um, have all these ingredients and how we can balance and eat healthy so that we can prevent from big uh, diseases like cancer in the long run or for common cold. So please share with us, uh, we, you know, this time uh, introducing Dr. Sharmila Mudgal and Dr. Parag Mehta. Hello, I'm Dr. Sharmila Mudgal. I am a practicing physician in the greater Boston area. Um, I have uh, also a master's in public health with a very deep interest in preventive medicine and public health. I'm also the chief medical officer for Avida Biomix. We are a life sciences company based in Bedford, Massachusetts, and we are focusing on the role of inflammation in chronic diseases. Dr. Parag Mehta. I'm a chief executive officer of Avita Biomix. Uh, we are a life sciences company ba based in Bedford. Um, I have a PhD in chemistry, and my primary interest of last few years has been use of uh, phytomedicine uh, into improving uh, daily health of people. We're here today to talk about the role of inflammation in chronic diseases. Uh, as a practicing physician over the years, uh, treating, physician, uh, treating patients individually, um, we have noticed that uh, chronic diseases are growing in, uh, amongst our patients. Um, we have been treating them individually, controlling symptoms, and uh, due to my background in preventive medicine and public health, it got me thinking about the role of physicians in helping to control some of these chronic diseases at a more uh, public health level. Um, when I started to think about um, um, the history of medicine, it, it took me back to the days when I newly qualified as a physician. And um, uh, as, as, all, as all newly qualified physicians do, we have to take the Hippocratic Oath. And uh, part of that, as part of that oath, we uh, essentially, when we qualify, we believe that first do no harm. And um, if, if thinking back to uh, the days before uh, modern medicine, um, I started to think about Hipp Hipp Hippocrates. And um, Hippocrates lived in a day when there were no medicines as we have today. And essentially, part of medicine was based on um, observations, reasoning, and um, a, a trial and error method. But some of those observations were so brilliant, and some of their uh, writings were so brilliant that even today we consider him to be the father of modern medicine. Similarly, coming from India, um, Ayurveda has played that role in our lives. Um, Ayurveda is rightly known as um, one of the most ancient systems of medicine. And uh, the system of medicine came down from the rishis where um, they had similar observations, uh, detailed observations, and they came up with a conceptual system for medicine. 
they noted these down and put them into uh, the texts which are the Vedas. So um, essentially, um, a lot of what we do today is informed, and in a very, very strong way, it's informed by what these uh, ancient fathers of medicine um, laid down as a framework for us, and we continue to build upon it. So. Um, uh, we're going to be discussing in that context what, um, what medicine is like today based in the framework of history and uh, understanding um, the role of uh, balance and inflammation in our lives. So Milo said um, one of the things we are trying to do at Avita is to look at role of inflammation in chronic diseases and what kind of anti-inflammatory treatments we can, we can develop, design and launch in the marketplace. But I think the fundamental as Shamila says is that uh, inflammation is involved in the pathogenesis of many diseases. And to simply explain inflammation to people is inflammation is like fire. Think of, uh, I think most of your viewers uh, will understand that when things are in balance, things work very well. Uh, flowing river is great, but uh, flooding the river is not good. So similarly, this uh, natural system is in balance, everything is working great. And, uh, and that in medical term, that is known as homeostasis. And when the homeostasis is disturbed by any of the external stressors, the body unleash a uh, number of mechanisms to counter that, to restore the, the natural balance. And one of the processes or the mechanism the body invokes is inflammation. And so just, just to kind of draw the differentiation between what is acute inflammation and what is chronic inflammation. So if I were to give an example to the viewers, I would say that if you get a scratch on any part of your body, you do need your body to mount an inflammatory response. You do need to, for those cells in your body to rush to the side to protect you. And um, it's, um, but once that danger is gone, that acute danger is gone, you need those cells to kind of return back to their normal state, which is a physiologic state, and, uh, and basically calm down a little bit. But what happens in chronic inflammation is that even when the acute stage has passed, these cells seem to remain in a heightened state of alertness, which means that they're continuing to do damage. And that is, that is what is the current understanding of uh, that chronic inflammation, that persistent inflammation, which uh, actually leads to harmful things in the body. Um, again, to go back to my analogy of the Ayurvedic system, these doctors, um, you know, they really spent a lot of time observing their patients. They kind of had a very good understanding between what happens between health and disease. And uh, they, they were um, uh, using nature's pharmacopoeia, whatever they had around them, and through a system of observations, treatment of their patients, as well as detailed written observations, um, we have a very good idea of what used to work um, in controlling some of these uh, conditions that they saw in those days. And um, we, we do have all of those resources available to us. It's, uh, it's just that it doesn't quite conform to what in the Western world, uh, you know, the trials and tribulations of the pharmaceutical industries and how they test for medicines. It's, 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 a, it's a philosophical difference. It's, uh, it's not that um, the, these are not active substances that can treat inflammation, it's just a way of, the way of testing is different. I believe that so, Ayurveda was the original personalized medicine. Um, so the Ayurvedic uh, Vaidyas actually had a very good understanding of their patient. They really looked at the patient as an individual, but at a, at a, at a broader level, they had conceptualized a, a, a different uh, group, subgroups of people. And so it, it, as I started to learn a little bit about it, I realized that what they had essentially defined was uh, subtypes of individuals. And they believed that people were born with these uh, constitutions or prakriti, as they call it. And that pe but people drifted in and out of these throughout their life based on whatever their external influences were. Similarly, in, in modern medicine, we do believe that individuals were born with certain um, genetic predispositions, which which we used to believe could not be changed and that you know it was it was whatever you were born with but i think it, it, our understanding has become a little more nuanced now we do understand that epigenetic influences lifestyle diet um, you know our emotional health um, the stresses around us uh, the every the physical environment around us all of these have a role to play in how our body responds to it and so we are we are at a, at a point in time where we can actually take the best of both worlds and we can use modern science to characterize, um, you know, how ancient medicine approached health and disease and try to find that right balance between the two. 
So, you know, I think, I think this is, uh, we, we really are at a crossroads where we need to uh, characterize this better, understand individuals and, and treat people, again, like you said, with, uh, with not these um, medications that are toxic, which I do believe have a role to play in acute situations, and, but at a more uh, chronic level or at a chronic disease level, we really need to find first what ails the body and correct that balance. Growing up in India, I um, had a very a balanced meal every day. Uh, every meal was freshly cooked and it contained various components, um, you know, a protein, carbohydrates, fats, and a minimum amount of sweets and processed foods. We just didn't have access to, to that kind of stuff and we didn't really drink a lot of soda or any type of drinks, it was mostly water. Um, I um, at times didn't understand the importance of that balance in my life and every single meal had a proportion of spices in it, wholesome spices that and freshly cooked food that was very seasonal in nature. So whatever nature produced at a particular season, I, um, I grew up understanding that it had a role to play in keeping us healthy. Uh, I didn't always appreciate it, and I sometimes long for fast food and uh, things that seem tastier. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, growing up uh, and understanding the role of inflammation and disease, I, I kind of now get it that it's, it's, it's probably okay to eat these things once in a while, but eating it every day is not really good for the body. Um, so when I remember, and again, for the mind. Uh, exactly, and I remember my mother would bring me uh, different types of drinks, which sometimes tasted really foul, I have to admit. It, it, it wasn't always uh, fun to drink these things, but she would go into the kitchen, pull out her spice box and uh, put in a few spices into it and, and whip up this drink. And um, strangely enough, it, it kept us healthy. It kept us healthy. It kept us, uh, go, you know, through various stages of our life childhood diseases, um, you know, uh, the stresses of puberty, growing up, childbearing. Every step of my life, some spice or the other has been uh, either from my mother's cabinet or, you know, once I had my own home, my own cabinet. And uh, I, I took it for granted. I really didn't understand uh, uh, what I was putting in, but I was drawing from my own experience and my mother's experience and just uh, very intuitively picking the right things for the, at the right time and for the right condition. Um, but as I put on my scientific hat and I started to research this, I, uh, I am simply amazed at how much knowledge is there in that. And, uh, um, you know, I, I think that most people don't understand, um, you know, these whole foods, these whole nutrients, they really pack a punch. They are nature's chemist, as you said. And I, I've come to believe that whole spices actually have a combination of compounds. Say, for example, um, haldi, turmeric. Uh, we take it for granted, you know, in South Asian homes we, we put a pinch of it into almost every food and uh, I don't know if how many people realize how powerful it is and how it really functions. But in, in, in right form? In the right form, in the right form. Yeah. And, um, you know, as, as we've studied it, we've realized that you can separate, you can take this yellow powder and you can take it into the lab, you can separate it out and the, the most uh, prominent compound and if, if any of you are uh, going into pharmacies today, you see it as curcumin. Now curcumin is just one of the compounds from turmeric. It's one of the 235 compounds which 200, are in turmeric. Exactly, 200 plus and all of them are active and they all have very strong anti-inflammatory properties, uh, anti-oxidative properties and many other properties that uh, I think we still haven't fully understood. But to get back to inflammation, right, and, and what do we have today? We have uh, NSAIDs. We have, all of us have ibuprofen and naproxen, analgesics like Tylenol. Um, these all have a single, uh, single molecule and they act on single pathways like Cox, the Cox pathway. But I don't know that many of our viewers know that uh, turmeric actually has compounds that are natural Cox2 inhibitors. Um, they act not only on the Cox pathway, but they act on many, many other pathways and they modulate the body's response to inflammation and it has a very comprehensive modulating effect. So, so I think that really informs our thinking. It's, it's better to have the whole versus the part. Right. And so to conclude, I, I think what we are trying to say is that um, there is no single medicine that works for a number of these chronic conditions and we all have to step back from our very busy lifestyles, take a look at what we are putting into our bodies. Um, so as, as Parag, as you said earlier, let food be thy medicine and let medicine be thy food. 
And uh, Hippocrates, uh, I believe, uh, he said that. I didn't say that. He, he said that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, you know, we have to step back. We have to look at what we are putting into our bodies. We have to look at what we are doing with our bodies. Are we doing too much exercise? Are we doing too little? Uh, where are we living? Who are our uh, confidants? Who are we communicating with? Sharing our stresses. Uh, it's it's really important. We are we are uh, we have to have that balance, and we have to really understand what keeps us healthy. And hopefully, um, for, for a lot of people, you know, I, I, as I always say to my patients, it is nice to see you, but I hope I don't have to see you too many times in my office. I would rather keep my patients healthy, and I would rather they learn how to manage um, and uh, manage their health and prevent diseases rather than treat them once they happen. So um, happy eating and um, enjoy your food, enjoy your life, and uh, hopefully we don't have to give you medicines to keep you healthy. What a pleasure it was to be uh, for Dr. Sharmila Mudgal and per, uh, Dr. Parag Mehta to share their views, their knowledge with us and with you. And I'm so I'm sure Soph and me. It was such an interesting talk what she had to say, like to go like when we have diseases and to prevent it. Like she's all into prevention, and it's so interesting to know that to prevent. You know, she'd rather have people. You know. Uh, have as a preventive than to uh, actually to treat them. Yes, instead of the hardcore medicines, that's what she was trying to explain, Plain which to I understood just like you, that you can uh, eat healthy, you can uh, take your nourishments directly from food and uh, sources that's in your closet, in your cabinets, um, eat fresh, and exercise. I exercise, of that's course. And of course, as usual, from Soph and me, we always want to say, please take care of yourself, and women here, as well as, well as all over South Asia, and globally, and men too, all my friends. Um, it was a pleasure to be with the three doctors. Thank you to Dr. Koshal. Uh, thank Dr. you to Dr. Mutkal. And thank you to Dr. Mm -hmm. Parag Mehta. Um, it was a wonderful show. We enjoyed it. We did. We learned a lot from Ed, and uh, I hope you will you enjoyed it too. Thank you.